What's your shooting schedule like these days? Um, pretty loose, actually. Uh, I do more exhibitions. I'm working on a book, a couple of book projects. Um, I make appearances like this. I do shoot somewhat. I just met a new band a couple of weeks ago called The Stripes, a really hot young band. I, I did some pictures of them, but I don't really travel the way I used to and, and kind of seek out bands the way I used to. It's uh, Everybody's taking pictures nowadays, so it's a bit competitive, <laughs> more competitive than ever. Shooting anybody locally? Uh, here in Hawaii, somebody asked me that earlier. No, uh, I'm here to lay on the beach and answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would, but nobody's asked me. So. <laughs> yes. Hey Bob, um, really enjoyed that. <coughs> I only talked the second half because I, I had to work, but I, I'm inspired and. Out of high school, I was a professional photographer for a number of years, and I took a lot of skateboarding and stuff that was in the 70s, but I also did rock groups. I had some pictures of prints and all kinds of stuff. And I was wondering, in this day and age, because I just found all of those negatives and slides, how would you go about trying to do a show or do something to show what you did back then? Um, well, you can uh, contact some of the galleries, uh, show them you know, what you have. Uh, nowadays, people are always looking for the unseen, you know, pictures, uh, especially if you have somebody who's well known. Um, it's not easy. There's a lot of competition, uh, but just you know, keep trying to contact people, magazines. Uh, although it's different now with the internet, that there's so much out there. Uh, but there's a company called Rock Paper Photo that specializes in rock and roll, uh, you know, print sales and Marston Hotel Gallery is one that I work with. One of the things I like about digital, you know, it, it has its plus and minus. There's a lot of people like the quality of film, the way you, you get a different kind of depth and richness of the picture that you is more flat with the digital. But yes, with digital, you know right away whether or not the exposure is right. You can switch the ASA from 400 to 4,000 to 25,000 from frame to frame. Um, one camera, you can shoot black and white color indoors, outdoors. Uh, I used to, uh, automatically, everybody used to carry three cameras, because you carry a black and white camera, a color camera, you needed two color cameras, one for indoors, one for outdoors. Um, now, I mean, I, I, I use this little Canon pocket camera. Uh, <laughs> this camera has more power in it than my whole camera bag back then. You know, it's got a zoom wow. lens, it's got all different ASAs, I used to have to carry 20, 30 rolls of film. Uh, it's all right here in this little tiny box. It does quite a bit of it. It used to be called a point and shoot. It was very simple. These point and shoots are really complicated. There's a lot of settings in them. Um, I really appreciate Photoshop because we can save a lot of pictures that you know weren't exposed right in the old days. If it was too thin or too you know too dark, we can fix that easily in Photoshop. We can balance things in Photoshop much easier. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of advantages to digital. Um, it certainly raised the competition because everybody's a photographer, uh, and and I see a lot of people enjoying that, and I don't see anything wrong with that because I enjoyed it, and making the technical side of it simpler. I never really enjoyed the technical side of it. I enjoyed getting an image, and it was actually, you know, sometimes painfully difficult to have to develop it and then print the picture that wasn't exposed right and try to get the image to come through. Nowadays, you know, you push the button, the camera knows more than I ever knew. You know? So I, I see the development as a good thing. Because like I say, so many people, people you would never expect in the old days to even think about taking a picture. Just automatically take their phone out, take a picture, send it to their kids, send it to their friends. Uh, you know, people don't complain about it being complicated anymore. It's so simple. Yeah? Well, how big was that budget? Kind of <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was actually about a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, which for them was very cheap. Uh, they do massive shows down there. They um, imported 3,000-year-old sculptures from Greece and probably the insurance shipping the sculptures is more than I'll ever make in my life. 
Uh, it's a great university, Fafe University. That, uh, they do a lot with their museum there. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's a big That's why we had such special value. I don't know if you noticed that the, the responses that look like lamps, yeah. they're all in the pictures. It's not actually lamps. They figured out that if that was a light, it would light the picture from the top too brightly you know, to the bottom. So they put a piece of plastic in there so it looks like a lamp. And each picture was lit from a, a special light in the, in the ceiling. And there's about 280 pictures in there, so uh, a lot of the budget went to the lighting. Uh, I was very you know, happy to be able to do that. Hope to do something like that again as kind of an amusement attraction kind of thing. If you know anybody else who's got a big budget, I'd love to put that show on. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I want to say it's fantastic film. And I want to know how you feel about uh, sites like Corvus or Getty. Do you ever license your imagery to well, I, I kind of have a little bit of a pet peeve about Corvus and Getty. They're both massively funded. Getty has all the oil money behind it. Corvus has all the Paul Allen and Microsoft money behind them. And they sort of set out with a very good idea, uh, if you have a lot of money, uh, to buy up all the content. Because everybody is spending more and more time looking at their screens. And what you see on the screen is, uh, is content. And if you own all the content, if you own all the photos, you own what everybody's looking at. And that's the future, is people looking at all the screens. So they set out to basically control all the use of all those photos. And the only competition between Corvus and Getty, uh, they put a lot of photo agencies out of business because they didn't have to make a profit because they had such deep pockets to begin with that the idea was to put these agencies out of business, buy up all those pictures, and, uh, and, and control them. Now what they did just recently, uh, which one was it, Corvus or Getty? Um, just gave away 35 million pictures. All their whole stock is now open, free to the public. You can re you can uh, search it, you can use it, you can you know, put it on your, any sites you want, on your blogs. You can't use it commercially, theoretically. They think that somehow they're going to be able to license it commercially. I don't know how you can give it all away free and then say, oh, but if you're going to make money, you owe me some. Because you can't even find these people. I mean... Uh, the internet, I, I get little notices sometimes when something, you know, a picture of mine is here or there. By the time I get a notice and I go and look at that picture on somebody's Pinterest site or something, it's been shared 80 times. And those 80 people have shared it, you know, 80 more times. And, and uh, I kind of take it as a tribute because I can't stop it. And I just, uh, I do have to appreciate that a lot of people like a lot of my pictures. So I try to